So I wanted to show you how to do an effect like this where we have an array of objects here that are following a curve but that are also being controlled by an armature. Because of the way the new array modifier works, we can do a couple of things to make this work much easier and give us a lot more freedom to play and experiment with things. Here I'm in Blender 5.0 beta and I'm just going to get rid of the default objects here and I'm just going to create an object that we'll use to be the vertebrae of the spine or arm or whatever it is that you're creating. All right, that looks good for now. You can really do whatever you like here. The next thing we'll want to do is to add an array modifier to this. And you'll find that under the Generate menu, Array. Uh, array Legacy is the old array modifier, the one that's marked with Array and that has the icon that is the new Geometry Nodes based array. Now there's already a bunch of uh, great YouTube channels that have talked about different ways that you can use the array modifier and it's getting a lot of coverage so I'm not going to go into depth about how to use it but we're just going to use it in this particular setup. Now what we want is for our array members to go along a curve. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a curve and this one is just going to be temporary um, just so that we can see what's going on. We're going to replace it with something else here in just a minute. But if I take my array and I change the shape to curve and then I choose my curve object, then I just need to choose my primary and secondary axis to make sure that they line up with the curve the way I want them to. I'll go ahead and increase the count along the curve till we get something that looks decent. All right, so now that we have that, if I grab my curve and move it, you can see we're getting the effect we want. Now the question is, how can we control this with an armature? Because ideally, when you're doing some kind of animation, you're gonna wanna be as much as possible keyframing parts of your rig using an armature. Not having to do part of it with like curve shape keys and then partially armatures and partially uh, this and that and the other thing. Instead, you're gonna want to have a single control rig that can do a lot of different things for you and be as flexible as possible. So as I got to thinking about how the new Geometry Nodes based modifiers work, I had a thought. Anytime you had a built-in uh, setting or node that needed a curve, it was limited to objects whose base type was that of a curve. But if we're using geometry nodes, we can change the type of an object from one thing to another. So I thought, what if I started with a mesh, changed it to a curve, and then used that as the curve for my array modifier? Would that actually work or would that just fail? So let's see how that works. I'm gonna add just a plane here and get rid of a couple of the uh, vertices on it just so that I have a line and um, I'm just going to extrude it out like this. So we have a mesh line and I'm gonna add a geometry nodes modifier to this mesh line. So I'll jump over to my geometry nodes workspace here, add a new node tree and like I said the first thing we want to do is change this from a mesh into a curve so we'll do a mesh to curve node if I disconnect this node you'll see here in the spreadsheet that we have a mesh with we've got five vertices and four edges and then when I drop the mesh to curve node on you can see I have one spline with five control points so this is now a curve object. If I go back over to my arrayed object here and change the curve object from this Bezier curve, I'm going to use my eyedropper and I'm gonna choose this mesh that is now a curve because of geometry nodes. And sure enough, it does work to some extent. 
I'm going to put a sharp bend in here. And you can start to see that although this is working to place the uh, array items on, it's not quite doing what we want it to do. One of the main reasons for that is when we do a mesh to curve, the spline type that's created is a poly spline type, not a Bezier curve. But we can change that. If I do a set spline type node, I can change my spline type from poly to Bezier. And you'll also notice that still nothing changed. Well, that's because the control points on a poly spline are set as a vector type, so they have sharp angles. And when you convert this to a Bezier curve, it does not change those handle types automatically. So we need to change the handle types as well. So if I use a set handle type node, you can see that the default here is auto. And sure enough, that has now corrected what we were seeing. And we've got a nice smooth curve instead of the sharp angled one. And because it's being evaluated smoothly like that, our array items are pointing in the right directions. So if I come in here and increase this a little bit, you can see we now have something that resembles what we had before when we were doing this on a curve object. One of the things you will notice is you do lose some control here. You probably could bake it in if you wanted to with some additional node work here, but you do lose control of your handle points. You would need to use a set handle positions node, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna live with the automatic handles and what gets generated by this node tree. Now that we have this, let's see how we can control this using an armature. It may already be obvious to you, but let's check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my arrayed objects so that I can work directly with this curve that used to be a mesh. And because it used to be a mesh, I can parent it to an armature. Now what I can do is, since this was a mesh to start with, I can parent it to an armature and use bone weights on the mesh before it gets turned into a curve. So what I'll do is I'll grab this point and I'll do a shift S for snapping and snap my cursor to selected. And then I'm gonna add an armature. So I'll go into object mode, add armature, single bone. Now what I wanna do is place a bone between each vertex. So to make seeing those a little easier, I'm going to uh, disable this uh, mesh to curve node and now I can come in here and just extrude my bones like this. And here at the end of this last bone, I will do a cursor to selected and then add one more bone. Then I'll take that bone that is floating like that, grab the last bone in my chain, do a shift I, and this is going to add a IK constraint. Now I can move this bone and control my armature with it. Now that we have that, we'll go ahead and parent our line here to the armature. So I'll select the line, I'll select the armature, I'll hit control P, and I'm going to do with empty groups. Now that I have done that, I can come in and uh, go to my vertex groups. And what I'm going to do is I'll assign these first two points to the first bone, this one to the second bone, this one to the third bone, and this one to the fourth bone. Now I'm gonna jump into pose mode and I'll move my armature and you can see now that my line is following the armature. 
It's kind of hard to tell when I'm in pose mode because of the shading on the bones. But once I go out, you can see that that is working correctly. So now I'm just going to go back, and with my line selected, I'm going to turn back on my Mesh to Curve option. And you'll see that when I do that, I'm not getting that movement that I want. The reason for that is just in the order of our modifiers. If I come back over to my line object here, you'll see that the armature is being applied after it's converted to a curve. So this geometry nodes is doing the mesh to curve. And so this when this armature goes to work, it doesn't have any of those mesh points to work with anymore. So what we want to do is we want to move the mesh points before we turn it into a curve. And now once we do that, if we move our armature, we can see that we are getting the result we want. So if I go in here and change the viewport display on my armature, maybe change that to stick, there you can see we're getting a really good representation of what we were looking for. So now that we have this, our control is simply this IK bone that we had added. And so we can just keyframe this one bone. So if I add a keyframe here on frame one, add one here, and then bring frame one back over, So as you can see here, we're getting some nice motion and uh, the arrayed objects are working like we are expecting them to. Now as an extra little bonus tip, the array modifier isn't the only new geometry nodes based modifier. So uh, if I go back to this curve here and I add the curve to tube modifier, you'll see that we can add this to a curve like we had done before. But if I also duplicate my original curve here, I'm just so I'm going to get rid of the armature control on that and unparent it. Okay, so now our mesh line is being changed into a curve again. I can add the curve to tube to this object. So not only can I turn a curve into a tube, I can now turn a mesh edge into a tube as well. And as I extrude these points, you can see we can get all sorts of shapes. Now, currently, this is on round mode. That's the default. But I can also put this over on custom. And once again, we see we have an object that's expected to be a curve to define the shape that we want. And um, if I come in and let's say I add a plane like this. And so now we have this, if we wanted to add geometry nodes to it and we grab that geometry nodes that we had created to go from our mesh to curve and I'm simply going to get rid of that middle. So now we have this object. We can use it as our profile for our curve. So not only is this curve defined by a line that's been turned into a curve, its profile shape is also a curve that's been defined by a mesh. So there you have it. There is using mesh objects and changing them into curves so that we can use them with some of the new geometry node based modifiers. I hope you take something away from this and I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.